Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to a, a little talky show, I guess you could call it. Let's call this one Vehicles That Are Still Fun in 2018. So, <laughs> that one was fun, but it didn't last long in that match. Here's one, the XP-55. How many of you guys own this vehicle? Uh, the flight model for the XP-55 has gone through several changes, and this airplane used to be notoriously overpowered, and now it's quietly overpowered. <laughs> so, if you haven't gotten the chance to pick up the XP-55, uh, look for the opportunity. This is a fantastic airplane, tons of fun, and it performs just as well in Air RB as it does in Tank RB matches, if not uh, a bit better in Tank RB because of its very stealthy small frame in a game mode without markers for aircraft. So definitely check this vehicle out if you get the chance, uh, and check this out. <laughs> The uh, roll rate is one of the weak spots on this vehicle, but supplement that with snap rolling. That's using your uh, rudder in the same direction of your turn as your ailerons, and that'll snap you uh, quickly to the side, and you just might have as much fun with this aircraft as I have if that's even possible. <laughs> I've had so many good times with the XP-55 and check out this smooth landing. Uh, speaking of smooth landings guys, thanks for stopping in on the channel today. How are you doing? You having a good time? Let's take a, a look at another vehicle. This one is the heavy tank T-34 in the American Tech Tree again. Um, what an absolute blast this tank has been and with the AP buff it's even stronger okay let's try that again <laughs> it's even stronger than it was when it first came out this is a very competitive heavy tank that can snipe or brawl and its doom cannon of a gun is among the strongest at its tier good armor penetration qualities not the best but good uh, in a world of heat FS but the post penetrec that was not the right word <laughs> the post penetration effect is absolutely stupendous as you see demonstrated on that BTR uh, and can it kill itself very very quickly uh, or other T29 so this is arcade gameplay uh, I like playing my American heavy tanks in arcade it's just a little bit easier to make them shine there uh, one of the weak spots of the T-34 and the T-29 is mobility. This thing does not get around all that rapidly. I think it's a bit outpaced by the Tiger II, but your more effective armor and your very powerful gun more than make up for that deficiency. Now this is a vehicle that uh, I haven't played at all really until this match. This is my first or second match in the French F-8F. Uh, I think this is the B with the cannons. And what a joy to fly the unfair cat. <laughs> this thing is absolutely, uh, it, it takes everything that you had to learn about boom and zooming and turns it on its head. This plane does almost everything well at its tier and in mixed battles in tank RB, uh, this prop can dominate the skies. You can out turn jets you can out boom and zoom almost everything you'll face you can prop hang you can shred things with your 20 mils and uh, you can even carry some rather mean bombs for that initial strike on a ground target so if you haven't tried the bearcat uh, do check out the f8f when you get the chance the thing is incredible and that sort of brings up another subject repair costs ignore them uh, I spend the majority of my time without a premium account uh, every now and then I'll pick up a few days of premium along with uh, some pack when it goes on sale but in general I've done most of my grinding uh, without using a premium account so I know what it's like to have no silver lions uh, <laughs> it ain't easy to uh, to stay on top at least for a guy like me so 
when you see these high repair costs or high ammunition costs for certain vehicles uh, and it can tempt you to not play those vehicles forget it you know what the reason those repair costs are high is because the vehicle has the ability to earn lots of money uh, silver lines that is so generally you'll start breaking even and getting ahead with most vehicles um, there were a few exceptions some of the Japanese planes uh, had historically high repair costs and here's some PV2D action to keep you busy while we talk about that but uh, their their flight models were adjusted uh, their characteristics were changed their BRs were changed around to where they don't quite dominate the way that they used to and yet they still had those high silver line repair costs the Kika was one of those uh, which in Air RB is never going to be able to dominate a match it just doesn't have the equipment to do so in its engines or its guns uh, but it can do reasonably well and it's nice to see that the Kika has a much lower repair cost but when it comes down to it uh, in your everyday play of the game I would highly recommend ignoring uh, what makes good lions, uh, what has a high repair cost, uh, when you're not specifically grinding for something, and it's good to take time off from grinding, uh, from my personal perspective. It's been very good to me. Um, I like to collect vehicles. I like to get my hands on as many rare and uh, special vehicles as I can. And then when it comes to grinding, I just kind of ignore <laughs> what I'm unlocking and just enjoy the game. And I play what I want to play and I have a good time. And so that's the advice I would share with you guys. Just just have fun. Find something you like to play, even if it's low tier, uh, even if it's high tier and you are you don't feel competitive. Uh, check out the rear gunners on this PV2. <laughs> Watch this. We were nowhere near him. <laughs> But a magical ghost 50 cal comes out and one shots him. Ah, oh, yeah, there's a few things that could use some adjusting in this game, am I right? Uh, but it's good to just focus on the things that, that you enjoy. And if there's something that's driving you nuts about the game, there's so much game to get away from it all. So, PV2D, a very fun vehicle. I'm thrilled that I was able to pick one up. Uh, apparently, there was a a plethora of uh, of harpoons unlocked in this latest uh, event, and the price on those, uh, as of the making of this video in the market, is rather low. Uh, I've seen them going for fifteen dollars pretty consistently, but I've heard that they go for even less. So. If you didn't get a chance to grind for this plane, now's a great time to pick it up. They won't be available forever. This price won't be low forever. If you have ever thought about paying for a vehicle on the market, this is your chance. And uh, I made a video earlier talking about how I don't like the idea of rare event vehicles being in the market, but I'm open to a discussion. And uh, I think my stance has, has softened a little bit on that because they don't seem to be... Uh, KV-220s haven't come knocking down my door. <laughs> so uh, I like the way the market is working right now. It's very much in favor of the players uh, because the prices on some vehicles that you have to grind these events for are very, very reasonable. And it's more affordable than ever to skip the grind on World War II Chronicles and other events like that right now. Those things may change, but that's some good news, and I love to see that. I love to see the community uh, giving some relief to people who just don't have time to grind for these vehicles, and uh, I'm one of those people. <laughs> I, uh, I, I played the World War II Chronicles events for the first half of the air event and then or no sorry the ground event and then I bought uh, three uh, whatever they are stars or whatever to get my T-18 E2 which is another fun vehicle by the way uh, the thing is a beast it's uh, slow but it it really handles nicely just it's a satisfying thing to drive 
and that, uh, what is it, a 57 millimeter cannon, something like that, uh, with APHE is an absolute pleasure. It's a rare treat. It's almost like the Panzer III's gun, um, the, the long nosed Panzer III with a high velocity 50 mil, uh, but maybe even more powerful with a great reload rate and on a on a rugged chassis so again the t18 e2 is going for around ten dollars on the market right now uh and it's well well worth picking up when we're talking about fun vehicles look at that smooth landing uh, one of the things that continues to surprise me about this game is how much i'm able to just keep on learning what are you guys learning in the game right now? <laughs> I'm learning that American 50 cals are overpowered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you. I feel you, man. Every time I'm in my uh, my American A6M2 uh, Zero, that I, is another fun vehicle coming up, and I get nicked by a 50 cal, and immediately barbecue mode is activated, and I know that that my time in the match is mere seconds. I feel your pain, I really do, uh, but at the same time, every time I get uh, jumped by a by a Focke Wolf or a BF-109 when I'm in uh, my, my underperforming <laughs> American, no that's a lie, all the American fighters are performing very nicely where they are, uh, almost, almost to the almost exclusive I can't think of a single American fighter that's just unflyable uh, so fun vehicles but let's go back to the katana of the skies this nimble uh, but outdated aircraft the a6 m20 and this has been uh, I've flown the zero a little bit in the Japanese tree but I tend to to spend how many people are flying around me at this time but look at how it just dances through the sky and there are few aircraft in the game that can do what this airplane does a bit more speed than a biplane uh, but the maneuverability uh, to just absolutely waltz through the sky to samba through the atmosphere and decent enough armament. In fact, it's rather weak in its armament. The uh, Mark 1 um, 20 mils uh, that the Zero gets are very low muzzle velocity and Japanese high explosive rounds are uh, they're capable on light structures but it's really hard to take down anything heavy. They tend to spark quite a bit because of their low velocity and low fire rate and they don't tend to set fires the way that say the Menengashos can and that makes a huge difference against uh, the targets you'll be facing. I've gotten the majority of my kills with the nose mounted or cowling mounted uh, what are they seven seven point nine so I'm not sure what they are but they're rifle rifle caliber uh, machine guns as you can see you just kind of peck away at people until they expire and with the in absolutely fantastic maneuverability of this thing by the way we're in a four on one right now it's gonna turn into a six on one and uh, we're gonna pick up two kills and then get taken down but this was one of the most thrilling engagements I've had in the entire history of, of playing War Thunder I mean look at this just just uh, an absolute thrill to face off against these maneuverable uh, Italian and German fighters and to dip down and pull these maneuvers that would have seen me crash into the ground or stall out with any other vehicle. Uh, even a biplane would have been gone by this point. And we pick up our second kill in this dog pile and uh, wow, just wow. Uh, to be able to survive for so long under those conditions truly enjoyable and uh, because you turn into a hibachi when you take any damage the stakes are high <laughs> so it makes it even more thrilling if you'll pardon the pun <laughs> can you guys tell I've been having a good time in the game I really have um, with the victory day sale I've managed to pick up uh, don't tell tank mom uh, a few very nice vehicles that I've had my eye on for a while 
and uh, look at the burst mass of this PV2D. I loaded tracers just for the lols because uh, stealth works fairly well for this vehicle and the the M2 Brownings that you have in the PV2D have the early builds that don't have the better tracer rounds, the flamethrowers of the P47. But uh, look at this head on with an enemy fighter and we just annihilate him. People don't know about this aircraft. So let me tell you a little bit about the PV2D Harpoon. Uh, the white whale you see here <laughs> with this custom camo and I just made this one and uh, I realized after this match that uh, the damage uh, file uh, image just hadn't hadn't rendered properly when I saved it and that just happens occasionally with uh, this file format when I'm using GIMP and Long story short, I had to replace it and update it on Live.WarThunder. So if you go there now, uh, it's working properly. But the PV2D bomber spawn at uh, three kilometers elevation, a climb rate of 12 meters per second. Two very powerful engines on a reasonably light medium bomber airframe. You can see the roll rate of this is good for a medium bomber. Um, you can, to a certain extent, even dogfight with, say, a Focke Wolf uh, or other of the more clumsy fighters. Uh, your your roll rate is sort of a weakness, but plan things right and use your height advantage, and you can fly this medium bomber as, say, a heavy fighter. And what a blast, because you have eight. 50 cals slung under your nose and you can carry gun pods with an additional 250 cals each for a total of uh, what is it 12 50 cals <laughs> and uh, with the way that 50 cals are performing right now that is a death sentence and you saw that uh, we also have two defensive uh, turrets, each one housing 250 cal machine guns, so this can fire all the freedom in true American fashion. Uh, if if this is your, if that's your wish, uh, one of my favorite things in this game is multi-role aircraft. That's one of the reasons I want to see the A10 Warthog come to the game. I'm sure it's coming. It's probably going to be the next. Uh, uh, the first rank six aircraft, the the Frogfoot and the A10. I've been hearing things about them constantly, but uh, that's probably a question for another time. I'm still very much excited to hear anything about that, though. Um, and this is the uh, Harpoon is definitely a multi-role aircraft. Uh, you can carry rockets and bombs, even uh, what is those? The big ones that were meant to kill ships, Tiny Tims. And uh, here we see how the Zero performs against the Soviets and this is not a match where I gave myself the perfect setup. I intentionally got down at low altitude and turned with these Russians because they uh, Russian fighter pilots uh, tend to turn with anyone <laughs> because they're used to having an advantage in uh, energy retention or turn rate and it's just an absolute blast to uh, to pick on them using the same tactics that they've used against others. Uh, I hate a bully, so it's time to bully the bully. Bully, I say, yes. <laughs> and, and we're just about out of 20 mils. But let's talk a little bit more about the PV2D. And you see the uh, the poor reliability of these Japanese 20 mils. It's the low fire rate and the low muzzle velocity. Uh, that gets you and you usually need several hits on even say a wing to uh, take down a vehicle but we are doing damage and any performance he loses is our gain was I gonna talk about the PV2D it, it's a great multi-role aircraft and that's that's one of the things that assures me that I will continue to enjoy that plane long into the future uh, it's also rather sturdy it, it performs a lot like uh, a B-25 that went on a good low-carb diet and stuck with it. <laughs> so uh, let's call it a mix between 
the uh, the B25 and say the Stuka, right? It has the maneuverability of a Stuka more or less, uh, the engine power of a B25 and the armament to match, and a bit of the survivability as well. And uh, here you see us just dancing around at the zero. We're getting a feel for what we can do, for what we can get away with, and just having a good old time. It's nice to fly against people who will actually turn and dogfight with you. Uh, I love dogfighting. I love the low altitude to, to mid altitude turn fighting game. Uh, I have almost no experience with it, actually, spending most of my time uh, playing the meta as a boom and zoomer or even energy fighter. Uh, and it's nice to pick up a premium that introduces me to that world in the form of the American A6M2. And the great thing about having a Zero on the American team is almost all of the American fighters are boom and zoomers, and they are able to support you very nicely. But there's a downside. With all these P-47s getting air spawns and, uh, and Americans just generally uh, climbing toward the enemy and then directly engaging, uh, they're going to arrive, being much faster than you, uh, long before you will in a zero. So you tend to get whatever is left over. So maybe one, you know, one, maybe two kills and an assist. Uh, or you end up taking on the entire enemy team, <laughs> as you see here. So, by the time the Zero gets into action, uh, the match tends to be about half over if you're facing uh, the Russians. And so, that's just something to keep in mind. You really, this is not going to be, for the most part, a vehicle that you consistently get lots of kills with or see a ton of action but what you do have the chance to do is play that good old dog fighting turn fighting game and if people won't play with you well then you just uh, you just convince them otherwise <laughs> every fight ends up on the deck at some point at, at medium to low speeds and if uh, if the enemy team is not entirely devoted to the boom and zooming playstyle, then you can have a lot of fun. So it's one of those aircraft that uh, if you've played the Zero I'm sure you're familiar with, but it's a different beast on the American team because you don't have an entire team of turn fighters. You have a team of boom and zoomers, energy fighters, speedy boys if you will, <laughs> and pour one out for for little old me um i've been kebobbed good <laughs> anyway guys uh, it's been fun talking with you looking forward to seeing you guys engage in the comments and uh i'll catch you next time oh by the way uh lots more user replays coming up if you sent in a replay i'm getting to you uh i'm just kind of picking and choosing which ones i put out when and i don't even know what i'm gonna do next anyway guys Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.